Hi students, welcome to week 10, uh, where we are swiftly moving on to assignment two. And uh, the this week is really about understanding Socratic method and questioning and how we can utilize that, uh, not only for the assignment in terms of developing a Socratic dialogue, uh, but also in terms of how this might benefit us in our working lives and day-to-day um, -day lives as well. What we're wanting to accomplish um, over the coming weeks is the ability to, for you to form and join your debating group of four. So the first um, part of your assignment is going to be a group assignment. It's going to be, as I mentioned, a Socratic debate so this is something that you will be performing and it will be recorded and assessed in that way so we'll go into more detail um, through the lecture um, about what the expectations of that are we're also going to discuss that ability to distinguish between socratic dialogue method questioning and discussion and also using the Socratic questioning as a result of understanding the different questioning types. And this is something that we can refer back to from assignment one, um, looking at those elements of reasoning and for critical thinking. So looking at uh, Paul and Elder's uh, list of uh, re uh, intellectual understanding of critical thinking also understanding the aim, form and outcome of debates. So there is quite a lot of material to get through. Um, and I would suggest that there is also quite a lot of language. So going through the slides, you will see that there are quite a few um, things that will be familiar to you in terms of the way that we question and understanding how that questioning can create uh, more in-depth thinking and understanding, and that is through the Socratic method. But it may be that for many of you, it's about the terminology, it's about the language that we'll be incorporating over the coming few weeks. Um, and a lot of this relates to um, deep learning rather than surface learning. So um, you will have heard me or some of you who have uh, me as their tutor will have heard me talking about um, the ability to um, question, always question what it is that you're looking at. So I think particularly in this day and age where it's so tempting to just go on to Google and find an answer, that that is um, not satisfactory and it's certainly not what Socrates was espousing. So it's about digging a little bit deeper. It's about questioning the answers that you do find rather than just stopping as soon as you found some answer to your question, keep digging a little bit further to find out deeper understanding of what it is that you are questioning. So as I said, this these next few weeks are really looking at Socratic discussion, questioning, dialogue and method and looking at how we can apply some of our earlier experiences, some of our earlier activity, activities and critical thinking as well when we come into assignment two, which, as I mentioned, is going to be this um, teamwork where you're going to be in groups of four, you will be allocated those groups of four by your tutor. And then we can start working through um, all the different expectations that we would like uh, to cover off. And I'm just scrolling through some of the key slides that we'll be looking at during the week about how Socratic questioning can help you develop and explore more complex ideas, get to the truth of the matter, analyze concepts, follow through with uh, logic and reasoning. And there's some of the key, key factors that you want to think about when you start delving into your um, assignment brief. As I mentioned, we want to look at those standards of thinking and questioning from Elder and Paul's and looking 
at um, what you did in assignment part 1b and using these questions again these types of Socratic questionings which are very clearly defined and defined within those standards of thinking so thinking about things like clarity could you give me an example could you illustrate what I mean logic does all of this make sense together all of those things are things that are going to help you along the way in terms of building your Socratic debate. We talked about discussion, dialogue and debate, and that is something that will go into detail during the lecture session itself, understanding that there is a framework and a structure that you need to adhere to when you're developing a debate, and that we have got um, a number of, of different sheets, um, forms and um, cheat sheets, if you like, that will help you. And we've posted those up on Moodle week 10. I also emphasize this page in particular, the vocabulary overview. And as I said at the start, one of the key things about this assignment is actually focusing in on understanding the specific vocabulary that is required for this type of thinking, this type of dialogue, discussion, and debate. Uh, following that, um, the assignment brief itself, as I mentioned, is um, a group activity part one. Gr part one is the group activity where you will be in the form of a collaborative dialogue practice. Each of you will perform for three minutes within that role, and that will be recorded and assessed. Additionally to that, you will also be submitting your own personal reflection, which is part B, and that personal reflection uh, will also include, alongside that, your individual contribution, so evidencing the contribution that you made to the group debate as well. This will be covered off in detail by your tutor. Um, the guidance here at the moment is that we were looking for formative feedback uh, around the 22nd of May and final submission on the 31st of May. Um, so do follow on and have a look at the full set of slides, which is also available in week 10 and um, talk to your tutor if you have any further questions. Thank you very much.